Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the Sony Imaging Edge mobile app. Now, this is basically the replacement for the Play Memories app, which is the program you would use to suck the photos off your camera and push them onto your smartphone. You can also use this app to remote control your camera. And I'm gonna show you how to use all those features. Now, depending on your camera, there are some features that are you know, available and not available on others. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use the Sony RX100 Mark 7, and I'm gonna use my Samsung Galaxy S8 phone. Now, it'll also work on the iPhone. Basically, you just go and you download the Imaging Edge mobile app, and uh, you know once it's installed, which is fairly easy, it can be a little bit cumbersome to use. It's not the most user-friendly program to say the least. You have to make settings in the camera and settings on the phone in order to connect and suck it off. But I'm telling you, if you watch this video, you put in the 15 minutes of work to just get through the video and, and set your phone up, maybe probably take a half hour total, and you do it a few times, you're gonna see it's actually not that bad. And you'll be able to, in the field, if you have killer photos or videos, taken with a camera like this, the Sony RX100 Mark 7 or the Sony A6400, which I'm recording with right now, you could really pump these photos out to your social media, Facebook and stuff like that, and they're so much better than a cell phone image. You know, it's, it's definitely not as easy to use as a cell phone. You can just take the picture and send it, but it's not bad, You can, you, as you'll see in this video. Before I get to that, please hit that subscribe button below. I really appreciate it. If you subscribe, it helps out. Also hit that notification bell. That will make sure that anytime I come out with a new video, you will get an email letting you know, oh, new video from uh, Sony Alpha Lab is out. If you don't hit that bell, you're not gonna get that email. Subscribing doesn't just do it. And then in addition to that, Below the video, there's a description area. Make sure you go to that description area and then hit the more info button or like, you know, there's like, sometimes there's an arrow if you're on a mobile app. You open that up and all the information about the videos that I produce are below that. There's killer links in there for photography deals, all the gear I'm using in any given review or tutorial is in that description area below the video. And I really appreciate the support by clicking those links, it helps me out. So let's get on with this video. When you initially load the app on your phone, I'm, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy 8 here, but they all pretty much work the same. A little bit different here and there. But well, there's a couple of different things as we go through this that I want to point out that might you know be a little confusing because it was to me at first. So anyways, it's telling you that you must have location settings on. So it's referring to GPS. You need to have your GPS on in order for this to work. So if I hit that settings button, it brings me over to the GPS like so. And then if I go back, I can go back into the app there. And it says that the smartphone is already connected to another wireless network because I'm at home. So it's connected to my home wireless network. So that could cause you a problem. So if it does, you might want to go into your settings in your Wi-Fi and disconnect it and forget your home network, for example. Uh, I'm just going to click the OK button because it appears to work. It's just get letting you know that that might cause a problem. So then you, you hit OK and it shows up to this screen. So now you need to connect to the camera. So let me turn the camera on. Okay, the camera's on. So now what I'm going to show you in this first example is I'm going to show you, I just took a photo, so I'm in my, I'm hitting the play button here. I'm using the Sony RX100 Mark 7. And I just hit the play on the bottom here. It's the little play button. It looks like a little play symbol. And I'm going to go through and look at some photos. I got some video and stuff. So let me go to a photo. This is a pretty cool one. I want to send this photo over to my phone so I can share it on social media. So how would I go about doing that? Well, there's a button here, right here, that looks like a little picture of a phone, it's an arrow pointing at a phone. So you can, you know, shove the photo to a phone. You can push it to your phone. So if I hit that button, it brings up this menu and it says this image, all images with this date are multiple images. All right, I'm just gonna click okay here, actually the center button. And now the Wi-Fi is automatically turning on. Now it comes up with this weird screen with that symbol there. And all you gotta do on the phone here, notice how it says scan QR code of the camera. So I'm gonna click that and then it's telling me performs a Wi-Fi connection by scanning code, blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna click don't show that again because these messages are annoying, and I'm gonna click OK. Now it comes up and it turns the camera on the phone on. You just put it over the, over the screen and it automatically sees it, sets it up, and connect to camera, yes. So now it's gonna connect to the camera and it's gonna suck that picture off that I wanted it to send. And it's warning you again. Okay, if you're sending movies like an XAVCS, format movie, you might have a hard time playing it on your phone. 
So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna understand, I recognize that. Movies might not play correctly if they're in that format on this phone. Okay, turn that off so I don't see that again. And there it goes, it just sucked the image off. So now it's on my phone. And then it disconnected from the camera. It did all that automatically. Now you might not want it to automatically disconnect, but there's a reason why you do, because it'll kill your phone battery and your camera battery, and it'll just sit there and stay connected if, you do, if it doesn't automatically disconnect. So what you wanna do if you want multiple images, you just wanna go to function, and then you do multiple images like so and then you can select multiple images and suck them off the phone let me just go into multiple images and show you what that looks like i'll just hit cancel on that so there's a little box over there on the left you can see and when you select an image that box becomes checked so now it knows i want that image so i'm going to uncheck it because i already have that one so here's a darker exposure. Here's another angle. I like this photo, so let me check that box. Now it's taking HDRs. That's why there's multiple exposures here. So I'll do this one, like so. And then notice how it says hit menu for enter. So I'm just gonna click the menu button. And then it says execute. And you just hit enter. And now it's gonna come up again with this code because you need to reconnect the phone. I'm just gonna go over there. Boom, it connected it. Click OK. And it's gonna suck the images off and put them on my phone. This method works really well. And that's it, now they're on my phone. So if I go, if I hit the home key, for example, and I go into my gallery, that's on the Samsung, you could see the images are there. And here's the images. And now I can share them on social media or whatever. And so forth. So that's how that works. And it's, it's fairly simple. So another thing you can do, if I go in here, back to the app, I'm just gonna click OK. It's just letting me know it's connected to my home network now. My phone's automatically connecting. So what you can do is you can go into your settings and, and choose like forget network, and then it won't automatically connect to your home network while you're doing this, but you don't necessarily want to do that. So it's trying to connect, but it can't connect because the camera is not ready to be connected. So what I got to do is if I go into the menu and I go into network here, you have a couple different options. You have send to smartphone function, which is where we just were. We just used the shortcut key by hitting that little camera icon. But if you go in here, you can get into it this way as well. See, it's saying I could not find a Wi-Fi. So just go into your camera to your smartphone function or hit this little button that we hit before. I'm just gonna click that button. And then we have send to smartphone. And then you can say sending target proxy only. That's basically what kind of quality photo you're sending. I have it set to default quality right now, which is two megabyte files instead of the full resolution files. And now when you go in this way, you have the option of selecting on device or selecting on the smartphone. So you might rather look at the photos on your smartphone and select from there. So I'm gonna choose that this time and I'm gonna click retry, click cancel, and then I'm gonna do scan QR code again. There we go, click okay. And now it's gonna come up and it's gonna show me the photos on the phone. See that? And it's organizing them by date. So I'm gonna look at these photos from the other day when I was at my parents' house and I actually took a bunch of slow motion videos of the kids and stuff. So let me just go back and I will go to yesterday at the time of this recording. And there's a lot of movies here so it's taking a second for it to load. And here they are. And now you can scroll through and you can just select the photos that you want or you can just select all of them from that date by hitting the button on the top there. So as you can see, this is a pretty powerful program and it works quite good overall. It's a little bit finicky at first when it comes to connecting and stuff. All right, so what else I wanted to show you was, if I just go back here, click back and it says it's gonna end. Now I can just click connect to camera, like so. And it's gonna try to connect to the camera, but it's not gonna work again because the camera's not ready to be connected to. So what I have to do is I gotta go into the menu and I can do control with smartphone. Now check this out. This is a really cool feature. Control with smartphone on connection. So let me go to connection. And now this puts the camera in the connection ready state. So because it wasn't ready before, I'm gonna hit cancel. And now I'm just gonna hit direct connect. Let's see if it'll work now. See that? It just automatically connected. And now I have remote control ability of the camera. How cool is that? So I can now zoom in and zoom out. You could take a photo. I have it in rapid fire mode right now. So you could see on the icon down here on the left, it's got multiple images. So if I do that, 
it's just gonna rapid fire, and then you can stop. So it just took all those images, and now it's actually copying all the images to the camera, which is gonna take a second, so I just gotta wait. We got uh, grayed out functions while it's actually writing to the memory card. So this remote control app is great because you can actually use this outside, you can have the camera set up outside, and you can be like 10, 15 feet away inside, for example, and have you know the camera set up at the bird feeder, or whatever the case may be. And if you look, you can just go in here and change all the settings you want. Now here's the drive mode, and these are all the different drive mode settings. So there's bracketing, all sorts of stuff like that, self-timer. I'm just going to go to single shot mode for now and then click X. And notice how the button changed for single shot mode. So now if you hold it, it focuses and it takes the shot. So that works really good. And then it shows you the picture for two seconds. So you get a little preview and then it goes back. Now up here on the top left, you can select your mode. And here's your different shooting modes. And notice how you can do high frame rate. So that's super slow motion. So that's an awesome way to control your super slow motion if you're trying to capture something that you, you yourself are doing. You know, like a stunt or something like that. You can have your phone hooked up, ready to go, have the camera set up in high frame rate mode at end trigger, and then you can do your little stunt and then boom, hit the button to get it to record to the camera. And I'll show you that in more detail when I do a video on the high frame rate mode for this particular camera. This is just about the app, the Imaging Ed Edge app. Now, notice you can do display and change the way it looks. If you go to menu, you have a whole bunch of different features. You have drive modes, flash, red eye, focus mode, single shot, AF. You have dynamic range optimizer and auto HDR, metering modes, file format. If I change it to JPEG and then I go into dynamic range HDR mode. Notice how you have all the HDR settings now. So this is great for auto HDR. And I like that feature. You have to be in JPEG mode to use it. Then you also have zoom settings. You have a lot of features. You don't have all the features like you do in the camera when you're using the full menu, but you have a lot of different features that you can control from here. And you can go into, you know, your video settings. You can do live view quality. I have speed priority set. So we can check that to image quality priority camera information, review image, you can turn that on or off, location information, you can turn that on and it'll automatically embed the GPS information onto your photos. I have that turned off. You can change where the images are stored on your device. You can have a grid line set up, which I do right now. I have it set up to rule of thirds. And then you have this other mode, mirror mode, which will change the way that it looks if you're doing self-recording and stuff. Pretty cool feature. Let me just get out of settings here and notice how I have that grid on the screen. That's the rule of thirds grid, which I quite like. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you, if you hit the AEL button, that's the auto exposure lock, and that will lock the exposure, which is pretty nice. Sometimes you need to do that if you're changing lighting or, or things like that. And um, you got white balance, you have your single shot focus mode, AFA, AFC for continuous autofocus. So you have all these different features that you can access right here on the phone. And you can also use the camera at the same time and it'll catch up. It just takes a second for it to catch up. So you can do touch to focus on the camera, like so. Focus it, get it where you want, and then you can take the picture with the uh, phone here. So you're not actually touching the camera when you take the picture. So it's a really versatile app. And oh, by the way, when you're using it in remote control mode, it automatically sucks the pictures off that you take and puts them in the gallery for you. See that? Because I took like 20 shots in a row before. So they're all right here. So that's another cool feature when you're using it in remote control mode. It actually will take the pictures for you. Now it did just disconnect because I went into the gallery mode. So it's trying to reestablish connection. So let's see if it automatically does it. It might. And it did. So that's kind of cool. It automatically reconnected because I didn't take too long. That's pretty much it on how this app works. It's, it's designed to remote control the camera and it's also designed to push the photos from the camera and, and videos, by the way, from the camera to the phone. Now, I did actually push a video to the phone, and you remember how I told you it prompted and said the video might not play correctly? Well, it actually didn't. The video played, but the audio didn't. So I downloaded this really cool app. It's the VLC app. It's a video player app. I downloaded that, so when I installed the VLC app, it automatically searched the phone for videos, and here is the video that I put on earlier, and this is a 4K video sample taken with the RX100 Mark 7. And you can see here, it looks fantastic. And it just pushed that video file right to my phone. It did take like a good probably two, three minutes for this file to copy over because it's so large. So you can use it for videos and photos, guys. While I'm here, one other thing I wanted to show you is this cool little accessory you can get. It's called the VCT SGR1 from Sony. And it's perfect for the RX100. You can actually control 
the camera using the zoom function and stuff like that. If I go to shoot mode, you can just grab this thing and hold it. It's like a nice little handle and you can zoom in and out. You can take a photo, you can take video with it. And then if you're shooting in selfie mode, you can actually spin this around. You can just loosen it up and spin it around. And now you're in selfie mode and then tighten this back up. And now I'm shooting in selfie mode and you have control of the camera. So this is a pretty cool accessory feature and I like the fact that you can turn it into a little mini tripod. It's perfect for tabletop work and interviews and things like that. I just started using it today and I was impressed with its you know, overall quality, small size, compactness, comes with a little bag and stuff. And I really hope you got something out of this video. I will catch up with you next time. Take care.